nearly three-fourths of Nebraska's corn crop was rated good to excellent in the latest USDA state condition reports, but the state also now has recorded its first case of a potential problem. UNL Extension plant pathologist Tamara Jackson Zims joined us near East Campus Thursday and said we're seeing the first instance of southern rust. We are, and so we've got confirmation of southern rust in Odo County. That's near Nebraska City right now in southeast Nebraska. And we've got some other examples of samples uh, that are suspect and being submitted at, at this point. You say that there's also some common rust in fields across Nebraska. Why is it important to diagnose the difference between southern rust and common rust? Well, that's, that's right. We've got common rust every year, and common rust just isn't the threat that southern rust is. Common rust is not as aggressive, and we do have a low level of resistance in most of our commercial hybrids. In contrast though, southern rust, that pathogen is very aggressive and we have no resistance to it essentially. And so if it does move in and we have a lot of pressure, it could become a yield limiting factor, but we're not there yet. It's very sparsely distributed at this point. How would you tell the difference between southern rust and common rust? Well, there's a few characteristics I hope people will look for. In general, we tell people to look at the color of the spores or the pustules produced and where they're being produced. And so southern rust is usually limited to just the top surface. Now, common rust can sporulate on both the upper and lower leaf surface, but sometimes when common rust first begins, it starts more on the top. And so people who notice it early in, in the infection process might be easily confused like the sample that I'm showing here. How high is the threat that it could still spread to northern areas of Nebraska? Well, the threat is there, and so I want people to be aware and check out the CropWatch articles for updates. We do have a lot of southern rust in states to our south, and so there's a lot of fungal inoculum that could still blow up with southern winds. And so the, a lot of this will depend on weather pat wind patterns and weather conditions, and so of course, like most fungi, they use a lot of humidity and moisture to germinate and infect. Which fields would be at the highest risk? Well, I hope people will especially pay close attention to replanted or late planted corn, and we've got an awful lot of that. And so those fields, if they become infested with this disease, are ones that would be at the highest risk for yield loss. So widespread areas, your recommendation is not treatment at this point. That's right. Right now, we're not there yet. And so this is something that could develop over the next several weeks. And if people pull the trigger too early, the protection will be gone before the real threat comes. Tamara says the state is still seeing both Casas wilt and northern corn leaf blight spread in some fields. She advises producers to continue scouting and be familiar with hybrid ratings.